it's it's sorry, you have such a poor audio. Can I suggest this? Um, I want um, to ask uh, you a Frank, question. Frank, yeah? I, I might have caught most of it. He's saying that he has both the, the liens or notes of liens re regarding uh, IRS and State Department of Revenue issues. And he's asking if once he does the ecclesiastical deed poll, should that take care of those liens or is there another step? Uh, it is a key part. It is an absolute key part. Will it take care of it? What we're finding so far is that at a, at a domestic level, certainly within the courts, there is an unwillingness to, um, to completely uh, release. And, and to be honest, there may in fact be no mechanisms within the national system for them to collapse the trust. That's something we want to prove, that they may register babies in states and counties, but there's no way to release them except from the very top. The IRS, I believe, are very sensitive to this, extremely, and uh, you are doing the right thing. You're contesting the mechanisms they're using in order to do what they're doing against you. So the short answer is yes, it will affect. What extent? That is something that we have to take on um, case by case because at this point there's no golden rule to say that you send in one deep pole, they stop. You send in two deep poles, they stop. It's, it's at this stage we are still seeing the system learning um, again even the meaning of honour. So that's the honest answer at this point. So I can't say to you that it will completely eliminate it yet. You may have to go to a great divine writ. We don't know yet. Okay? Yes, thank you Frank for uh, addressing that. We have Central New Jersey on the phone line. Are you there? you have a question for Frank? Yes, hello? Hi. Yeah, how you doing, Frank? Um, I got a couple Good. of questions. Um, I'm involved right now in a, in a court case. Um, I, I'll try to do this as fast as I can. Um, uh, several of my family members, my wife included, uh, were all picked up on certain charges. And yep. um, right now I'm the only one. Um, my case was severed due to a medical issue of my court-appointed lawyer. And yep. All of them, all of my other co-defendants went to trial and lost. Now, yep. I'm just finding out about this EDP and, and, and just basically my, I'm finding out the truth about a lot of different things through, you sure. know, I've been studying on the site and, and listening to all the calls. And I really actually, I want to, I want to thank you for, for, I know it's not just you, but, you know, for the work that everyone is doing because it's, it's sef def definitely needed. And I, I greatly, greatly appreciate what you're doing. And, you know, just keep up doing what you're doing. But my question to you is, uh, I need to file. I'm, I'm in a process because I didn't have my birth certificate. I have it now. Now, um, yep. one first question is, I have a state-issued birth certificate, but I was born in a specific city. Now, do I send my, my EDP uh, with my birth certificate to the state or to the city I was born in? State. Send it to the state. Yep. Okay. All right. Even if I have a city issued one, I would always send it to the state. It, look, it's notice to agent to principal. Yeah. Okay. So it it really once you put it into a vital statistics, right? It, it, it it's fine. What we're proving, firstly, what you're doing is you're lodging a, a claim of right. Okay. And and then when that claim of right is dishonoured, then we're going to raise the stakes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But we, what we're allowing the system to do, just so everyone understands, no one should be going off and saying, I'm going to write to the Pope and write to, please don't be writing to the Pope. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to say, you registered me at a local level. I should have the right to um, step out at a local level. And I'm writing my claim of right. And if you dishonor my claim of right, I'm going to keep building my claim of right up to the top to show that nowhere in your system is there any honour. Yeah? Okay. Now that, that, that is what we're doing. And I know it's painful, but it has some real effect as you go. It'll affect your case, it'll affect everything. So oh, far I, away. I, I, I see that, I, I see that. Okay. Like, you know, leaps and bounds. Good. My other question to you is, now, um, filing on the behalf of others, because, um, you know, my wife is in jail right now, and along with her 
are her two brothers and her father. Now, they are not my blood family. They are my in-laws. My wife is my wife. We are legally married. Now, I realize, sure. now, what, what would I do on filing for their behalf? A great writ of habeas corpus Okay. once you have perfected your claim of right. Okay, now I, I would, so I wouldn't file EDPs on their behalf. No, you can't. Okay, I can't. Okay. Okay. So that that's how. Okay. Okay. He was close. Oh, I'm trying to write this down. Okay. When, think of it this way: you're in a storm. Okay. People are drowning. You've got to you've got to make sure one thing's first right before you go and try and save someone who's drowning. What do you got to do yourself? You got to make sure that make you're. Sure, I make sure that I'm secure. I make sure that I'm. Yeah. Eligible. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Make sense. That makes perfect sense. Okay, okay, good luck. All right, thank you, sir. Have a great day. You too. Right. See you, bye. Thank you. Okay, uh, another question on the uh, chat side here is, are there any corporations backing Ucadia at this time? None. There's been no donations. There's been no corporations. There's been no benefactors. It has been done without owing anyone anything at all. Now, <clears throat> just to qualify that, that's never been done before. Never. Ever. Every philosopher, every idea that has ever come down the pipe has had the influence of a benefactor, a patron, a corporation, or someone making the life of the writer easier. Uh, I'm not here to whinge, moan, cry... <laughs> But it's been bloody hard doing it that way. But there's a reason for that. When uh, the entire model is conveyed to all of you at a grassroots level and I am made completely irrelevant, it means there is not a single power on the planet that is owed a single thing from this. And that has never, ever happened before. Every idea, every company, every deal has always had someone in the shadows. That's never happened before, okay? All right, great. Thank you, Frank. We have West Michigan on the phone line. So are you there? Uh, hi. Yes, we're here. Hi. Hi. Hi, Frank. Uh, we just have one more uh, question for you. Uh, my buddy, uh, he actually retained a lawyer, and I told him that he needs to revoke his power of attorney from the lawyer, uh, uh, to uh, actually go in there clear to be able to negotiate uh, with the judge at sentencing. Correct. Is that correct? He has no point of having a lawyer at sentencing unless he wants to get the maximum sentence. Okay, so we should follow to revoke the power of attorney from the attorney to get rid of the, the hired lawyer. Yes, but you have to be very careful because you have to explain a reason, right? Because remember, this is the private rules of a private association, of a private, um, of a private court. So it doesn't mean they have to accept it. The only reason that they would accept the revocation of the powers of the attorney is if you can argue that the attorney failed to provide some um, intrinsic information and therefore you're removing him at this stage. Yeah? Okay, we were thinking that since he did not... Um provide us with, uh, uh, to, he, he, he did not uh, re, uh, dispute that there was no unrebutted, there was no affidavit under penalty of perjury for them to issue a search warrant. And uh, that was one of the things we were going to uh, discuss, that he was, uh, uh, you know, denying us due process due to his, uh, uh, his incompetence of not bringing up the issue that there's no affidavit under the penalty of perjury. Which denies All right. What I do, yeah. What I do is, just, sorry, but sorry to cut you off, but think about what you need to do. So don't uh, don't say it now, but think about it. But just keep in mind that whatever you do, it needs to be um, a a sin on the part of being a member of the bar in imperfecting their system. It's got nothing to do with the law. It's got about them doing their job, right? So. Think of it in terms of what, what, would, what would upset the bar 
if a lawyer has failed to do and you've just mentioned a key point which is due process so if they've failed to perform a certain process that allows you to evoke your um, you know right of, of you know um, uh, withdrawing of consent because they've failed to disclose they've deceived whatever they've done and you can raise that then they have no choice but to accept that the lawyer is uh, to be um, withdrawn all right so good luck and um, I'm sure you'll be fine with it, okay? Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you, Frank. And we have uh, Ted on the phone line. Ted, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Terry. Hi, yes. Hi, hi Frank. Uh, here's a, uh, I just sent this to Terry in Skype uh, with the, what she can forward this on to you, but it's a uh, U.S. Supreme Court on January the 18th uh, this year, issued a landmark decision where they kind of, they issued the ability for judges to violate the Constitution across the board. And I won't yep. go through the whole thing, but it's uh, Terry can forward the link on to you. But this uh, allows judges to basically ignore uh, virtually anything. They they can, they can now violate the Constitution, do whatever they want, and they're yep. now been granted that, uh, that authority by the de facto Supreme Court. Yep. Well, lucky we don't rely on the Constitution then. <laughs> Look, the, if you want proof, that's a great piece of proof. Um, and, you know, there are certain people that, that um, would get most upset about it. I'm upset about it, and it might cause them to wake up, which is a good thing. But does it affect anything that we're involved in? No. We are presuming from the get-go that the private law of the private guild uh, in the private courts does not pay any attention to the Constitution already, and they've just made it official. So thank you for that bit of information. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Ted. All right, we have a board man. Uh, one more question. Are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, hi. Yes, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yep, can hear you. Okay. Um, just just wanted to, uh, that Federal Reserve, uh, not Federal Reserve, but that reserve system you were mentioning earlier, is that like basically the uh, UK there or one having, having their own banking system? And if so... Yep, then, it's called the Supreme okay. Financial System. Um. There is an entire reserve bank system. There is an entire structure of currency that has been defined. There is ledgers. There are rules. There's a whole implementation plan. And we're just waiting to make sure that the deeds of trust are perfected so that the local communities can take hold, so that they can um, competently uh, give birth to their own reserve banks and their own domestic currencies. But the entire system is there. Has been for some couple of years now. Needs some tidy up. But uh, absolutely yes. And I'll go through that in more detail the next few Thursdays. Okay? Okay, yeah, because then we basically have our own account directly with that bank instead of these other banks that want to give us so much Correct. Okay. If when you okay. get to a likes of 12 people, providing there is the right mix of skills, uh, you can effectively be completely self-contained without requiring a single one of their banks to help raise capital for homes, for food, for everything you need. Uh, that's an exciting thing. In fact, 12 people can become competent. 30 to 40 people um, can build a village. And when you get up to two to three to 400, the amount of capital and the amount of, of wealth that is retained by that community through this system is just unbelievable. And, and those communities, I have to say, are urgently needed because it's going to be those communities that save the bigger communities. So I'm very keen to start rolling this out. But before we do that, I know you've got legal issues, there's education, there's a deed of trust, there's all those things to be done. So those things are coming in now before we get on to the much needed currency, okay? Right, right, please let me know. All right, right. good. Thank you. Uh, Frank, real quick on the uh, 
relief and re- 